AP Chemistry, this is going to be uh, chapter 1.6, 1.7, and 1.8. So here we go. Uh, in 1.6, we're talking about dimensional analysis, and that is using the units uh, of, a, uh, of a given piece of information to help solve problems. So we're going to be using conversion factors to change the units. It's going to be a very common thing. Is we're going to see this in almost every single unit um, and a conversion factor it's some sort of fraction that equals one for example one foot is equal to 12 inches an equivalent statement one foot is 12 inches They're the exact same thing so I'm going to create this fraction okay <coughs> sorry my fraction bar is a little off um, 12 inches divided by one foot equals one similarly one foot divided by 12 inches also equals one this actually gives me two different conversion factors, and I'm going to use and prefer. I'm going to preferentially use the conversion factor uh, that gives me the correct units in my answer. Now, uh, we're going to go over some examples, and some of these uh, throughout this PowerPoint presentation, I will give you the answers so you can double check your work, and some of them I will not, and I'm going to force you to either email me or contact me in some way to double check that you got the correct answer because I'm going to want some interaction with you guys over the summer. So examples. Information I'm going to give you to problem solve here. Uh, these are your uh, statements of equality that you are going to turn into conversion factors. The Kentucky Derby race is 1.25 miles. How long is the race in rods, furlongs, meters, and kilometers? So I'm asking you to convert something into four different units okay four different units uh, go ahead and take a moment you can pr uh, pause the PowerPoint and try to do your calculations using conversion factors uh, to generate those four different numbers press pause now All right, see how we did uh, we have 400 rods, 9.99 furlongs, uh, 2,010 meters, and 2.01 kilometers. What about this one? A marathon race is 26 miles, uh, 385 yards. What is this distance in rods and kilometers? Go ahead and press pause now. Let's see how we did. We have 8,390 rods and 42.195 kilometers. Again, if you simply watched that video and did not attempt the calculation, you are doing yourself a disservice. Please make sure you practice those calculations before you go any further. All right. Here is a word problem that I'm wanting you to attempt on your own. And if you want to double check the correct answer, you're going to have to contact me or one of your classmates in order to do so. So, because you never learned dimensional analysis, you have been working at a fast food restaurant for the past 35 years, wrapping burgers. Each hour, you wrap 148 hamburgers. You work 8 hours per day, and you work 5 days per week. You get paid every 2 weeks with a salary of $840.34. How many hamburgers will you have to wrap to make your first $1? All right, so you're going to do that on your own. Again, contact me if you want to check for the correct answer. Again, we are practicing our dimensional analysis using that uh, crosshair style uh, unit factor label. Uh, but for now, we are moving on to looking at units that have powers. Whoop, don't, you didn't see that. Um, <coughs> so we have meters cubed right here, meters cubed, meters to the third. That's meters times meters times meters. And then we have uh, 1,500 cubic meters, uh, 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 sorry, centimeters cubed, my bad, centimeters cubed. How many meters cubed is 1,500 centimeters cubed? So I'm going to set up my conversion factor, the information I've been given, 1,500 cubic, ah, gosh darn it, cubic centimeters, that's fine. I'm going to use a conversion factor that's going to have three parts. I'm going to go one meter is equal to 100 centimeters, but I'm going to use that three times. And there's a very simple reason. These things are cubed. 
these things are cubed. In order to have this cubic centimeters cancel out, I'm going to have to have cubic centimeters on the denominator here. Right now, I do not have that. I have centimeters, right, to the first, to the one power. I need it to the third power. So how do I achieve that? I multiply it by itself three times. Same thing with this meters cubed idea. I have one meter, one meter, one meter. That's going to be one meter cubed, and that's going to be my conversion factor. Multiply it all out. Here's another way to write it. I can write all of this jazz just with the parentheses cubed. And again, guess who's not going to give the answer? Your teacher. If you want to check, uh, double check that you have the correct answer, you're going to need to contact either myself or a classmate. But here are some for you that you can actually know the correct answer. Double check your, uh, your procedure. How many uh, centimeters squared is 15 meters squared? Well, it's 150,000 uh, centimeters squared. 36 cubic centimeters is how many millimeters cubed? Well, it's 36,000 millimeters cubed. Again, attempt those calculations. Make sure that you are uh, setting up your uh, conversions correctly using this feedback loop. All right, here's another one for you guys to try. Another one that I won't be giving you uh, uh, the answer for, but I will be showing you how to set up this multi-unit conversion. What I mean by multi-unit conversion is the speed limit here is 65 miles per hour. What is the meters per second? I have, for each of these units, I have two separate units within that. It's a derived unit, miles and hour. Okay, miles and hours. That's miles per hour. That's multiple units. So it's going to be a little bit trickier. A lot of people have a rough time with this, but we're, we're going to set up our conversion factors in essentially the exact same way, the exact same thought processes. So I'm trying to convert 65 miles per hour into meters per second. Now, we don't want to do everything at once. We want to do uh, a little bit piecewise. But I'm going to start with 65 miles per hour in the same way that I have. I'm going to set up a conversion factor. I'm going to try to cancel out the miles by putting a mile on the denominator there. I'm going to find its equivalent statement, which I've already given you. It's 1,760 yards. Okay. Next thing I want to do is I want to get rid of yards because I don't want yards. I want meters. I can convert m to meters by using the conversion factor between 1 meter and uh, 1.094 yards. Well, now the unit on the numerator is going to be meter, right? Because miles have canceled, yards have canceled. The only thing uh, I'm going to have left is meters on top, hours on bottom. Well, I don't want hours on bottom. I want seconds on bottom. So let's deal with that. In the exact same line of conversions, I'm going to set up a conversion factor that will cancel out hours. How am I going to do that? I'm going to have hours on the numerator. What's equal to one hour in minutes? 60. Why am I going to 60 minutes? Because I know that in one minute there are 60 seconds, right? And I want my final answer to have seconds on the denominator. All I have to do is multiply 65 by 1,760 by 1 by 1 by 1, and then divide all of that by 1 times 1 times 1.094 times 60 times 60, and that is going to be your correct answer with the answer in meters per second. But again, check with your classmates, contact me if you want to check these answers. All right, last one. This is going to be, again, not giving you an answer. This is a self-check. You're going to have to contact someone in order to double check. Lead has a density of 11.4 grams per cubic centimeter. What is this in pounds per quart? The information that I'm going to give you here is for every one pound, there are 454 grams. For every one liter, there's 1.094 quarts. Again, attempt that calculation and then get back to me to double check. Moving on to 1.7, talking about temperature. Uh, <coughs> we've already talked about temperature just a little bit uh, in uh, uh, earlier part of the book. Uh, a measure of the average kinetic energy. Okay, and as we get into a, a future chapter, we're going to look at this in a lot more depth. Uh, but for now, just realize it's average kinetic energy. Uh, different temperature scales, all talking about the same height of mercury. And we're going to derive an equation for converting uh, degrees Fahrenheit 
2 degrees Celsius. Again, I'm going to give you the information. You're going to have to contact me in order to, uh, to double check your response. So we know, and again, we're deriving the equation to convert back and forth from Celsius and Fahrenheit right here. So what do we know? We know that 0 degrees Celsius is the exact same temperature as 32 degrees Fahrenheit. We know that, don't we? We also know that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, and it also boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Because it's different temperatures? No, it's because it's the same temperature. And so if we look at the difference between the freezing points of water in both scales and the boiling points of water in both scales, we find that there is an equivalency between 100 degrees Celsius and 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And so if I want to know what 1 degree Celsius is, I'm going to divide 180 by 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So that means, if I simplify this, 1 degree Celsius is 9 fifths of a degree Fahrenheit. So a degree uh, Celsius is almost almost twice as large as a degree Fahrenheit. So if you look at this graphically, okay, this is that uh, uh, line that depicts the uh, transition from the uh, freezing point to the boiling point. Zero degrees Celsius is not zero degrees Fahrenheit. Zero degrees Fahrenheit is well below the freezing point of water. And so if we're going to have a, a graph with degrees Fahrenheit on the y-axis, zero is way down here. Okay, zero is way down here. The freezing point of water is at 32 degrees Celsius. But the freezing point of water, looking at the x-axis, is right here at the origin because that's at zero degrees Celsius. So we have one point on the graph. It's uh, x is equal to zero, y is equal to 32. <coughs> we have a second point on the graph. Second point on the graph is uh, x equals 100, right, because that's the boiling point of water on the Celsius scale, and we have a 212 degrees Fahrenheit on the y-axis, which is where we got our little, uh, you know, rise over run, okay, 9 over 5. But this is all the information that we need to derive our equation to convert back and forth between degrees Fahrenheit and degrees Celsius. So go ahead and whip that up for me and send that my, my way in some electronic format. Last section we're going to look at on this, uh, this, this uh, video lecture. We're going to get density a little bit. Uh, density is the ratio of mass to volume. And the way we represent that mathematically is dividing mass by volume. Right? It's the ratio of mass to volume. You divide mass by volume. It's very useful for identifying a compound because each pure substance has a very specific unique density uh, is very useful for predicting weight okay I, if you want to know uh, how much stuff you need to carry in this certain uh, certain uh, volume you can know how much that is going that that mass is going to weigh and it's an intrinsic property it means it uh, does depend on what the material is not on how much of it you have just on what the material is so let's look at a density problem Let's look at um, an empty container weighs 121.3 grams, and it's filled with something called carbon tetrachloride. Carbon tetrachloride has a density of 1.53 grams per cubic centimeter, and the container weighs 283.2 grams. What is the volume of the container? So I'll give you a hint. We have the mass of the empty container with this sample of carbon tetrachloride with that sample it now weighs 283.2 grams the density of the sample is 1.53 grams per cubic centimeter what you are going to need to do is rearrange that density equation to solve for the volume of the container again calculate that go ahead and send that uh, answer back to me to double check Look at another one. This will be our last one. A 55.0 gallon drum, 55.0 gallons, three significant figures, weighs 75.0 pounds. Again, three significant figures when empty. What is the total mass, or what will the total mass be when filled with ethanol? By the way, ethanol has a density of 0 0.789 grams per cubic, 
cubic centimeter. And your statements of equality are one gallon equal to 3.78 liters and one pound is equal to 454 grams. Again, attempt this calculation, get into contact with me to check your answer. For all these calculations that uh, you're going to be doing by hand, it's probably going to be the easiest thing is uh, work your calculation out on a piece of paper, on your phone, take a picture of your work, and then just email me that phone so I can see what you're doing and I can double check, I can double check your answer for you. Alright guys, that is the end of this video lecture.